term agriculture is a revolution in the whole history of mankind agriculture is a epo changing uh, you know invention or activity you can call it can you tell me why is it a revolution why is agriculture known as the revolution we stopped uh, roaming what is wrong in roaming fast uh, hunters gatherers to we have become fast so is that good or bad uh, we lost that Uh, so that's bad. Why is it a revolution? No, but that can improve the population. We can more secure. The 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 life expectancy has increased. Yeah. Uh, so we have to improve the life expectancy. Life expectancy has decreased. Agriculture has uh, it has called it has caused uh, deficiencies. Deficiencies that came later on, but initially. No, it doesn't come later on. Just just a second. I'll just write it down so that okay from hunter gatherer. which means i have activity from activity i have moved to sedentary right as a hunter gatherer i am eating fruits nuts all sorts of things okay i have a balanced diet here i am only let's say wheat barley rice came much later i have only few things that i am depending on it is not as balanced as hunter gatherer okay so nutritional deficiency right so in both of these cases this is bad right pastoralism whatever you call it see hunter gatherer move to pastoral move to agricultural move to industrial right this is the sequence before this may be nomad right we are not talking about this we are talking about this we are talking about this we consider agriculture to be a revolution right in the whole history of mankind agriculture is a revolution why is it a revolution that means something has to be good about it right because trade has trade happened because your population has increased population has increased not as a cause it is the effect yeah so it is the effect not the cause Okay, trade has started. So before that, trade was not there. So then, what is this? Why do you require? Why do you require trade? Let's just ask that basic question. Why do you require trade? You are you have a surplus economy. it is a surplus economy from being surplus we have become negative so is that it's not good right how can it be good so what makes it a revolution plant diversity has decreased environmental crisis has happened our gene pool has decreased it has caused so many diseases it has affected plant life uh, animal life it has caused pollution eutrophication groundwater pollution soil pollution air pollution through methane global warming all of this has happened because of just agriculture so then why is agriculture called a revolution why is it such a great event it transformed the way we live our lives yeah from activity i have become sedentary is that good yeah it transformed so much that it all the other things have happened transformation so you that you completely forgotten what 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 was the earlier there this thing and now you something else you have become okay 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 i'm asking what is that transformation what is the transformation we are looking at did you understand my question yeah in the way we gather our food see this has more technology than this but what should i do with technology I'm happy here. We have more production and we can store for uh, the bad times. Then we can actually get the gather and gather and use it. See, here in hunter gatherer, let's say there is no rainfall, there is drought. I will eat animals. There is no shortage here. There is shortage only here. Drought affects agriculture. Not a hunter gatherer. 
How? Just for hunter gatherer, it takes a lot of time and energy throughout the day. But whereas with agriculture and all, technology and all, we get more time. Is it? You spend more time on agriculture? Think again. Perfect answer. The only positive effect of agriculture is division of labor, which means certain people can do agriculture, the others are free to do other things. Whereas, as a hunter-gatherer, you find your own food. That's all. Otherwise, agriculture has been the greatest bane to man mankind. Apart from this one benefit, I don't think of any other benefit of agriculture. Division of labor, that's all. Can you think of anything else? Especially environmental science. The civilization which used to be uh, wiped off the face of the earth because of uh, uh, climatic action. That will happen even with agriculture. No, we are much more resistant to that. No, we are much more vulnerable now, sir. See, when you depend only on few goods, your vulnerability increases. I am depending only, my major food is rice, next is wheat. If rice and wheat is wiped out, we will die of starvation. One of the theories could be that, but majorly we have accepted Aryan invasion. The you your Mahajanapadas, those are all not uh, Harappan. Not really. See, there could be uh, just to indulge you a little more, at the cost of everybody else. The climate change that you are talking about is the disappearance of the Gagar River, right? But on the Gagar River, you don't have all the Harappan settlements. You have other settlements on other rivers like. Sutledge bees, uh, Jhelum, all these other sites are there. So, it will account only for few of the cities getting extinct, if that is the reason. Right? So, not entirely climate change is the reason for disappearance of Harappan civilization. What exactly happened, nobody knows, but there are evidences for Aryan invasion also. The reason, basic reason is that technology, there is a sea change in technology. Harappans were that much more urbanized. The next technology after that was more barbaric. You don't have your chessboard uh, uh, division of your cities. There is no drainage system. These are all use of burnt bricks. They use, okay? Without going too much again into that, what I'm trying to say is that, apart from division of labor, I do not see any other benefit of agriculture. If you can think of anything, please tell me through the you know course of this class, and let's discuss. Yeah, clear. Clear so far? So now with this refreshment of our minds, let's go back to our topic. Okay, so, so far, basically we have understood what correlation is, we have understood what regression is. Now, let us look at some of the differences between correlation and regression. Some of them you already know, right? Let us just go through it again. First difference measures the degree of covariability. In the sense, what is covariability? As simple as that. So, we are talking only in terms of degree, we are talking in direction and in terms of form of the relationship. Yeah, These three we are trying to see in correlation, whereas in regression we are trying to predict. It is a little extension of that, we are trying to even predict. Because in regression we are also doing correlation. If you, if you remember, R value is nothing but your correlation coefficient. So, in regression you are also getting, you are getting the degree of the relationship, right? you are getting even the form of the relationship. In addition to that, you are able to predict the variable that you don't know. Yeah? 
able to predict the variable of uh, the value of one variable based on the other. Next, it's a relative measure. We talked about this, right? That's an absolute measure. We even talked about uh, this in terms of symmetrical and unsymmetrical, non-symmetrical relationship. That is, a correlation of x on y or y on x is the same. For regression, you have two different lines. y on x is what we talked about in our class. The same thing if I do for x on y, it will be a different equation completely. right? So here, the variables or rather the coefficients share a non-symmetrical relationship. Next, zero correlation exists. We have seen zero correlation, but there is nothing called zero regression. Why? Perfect answer. Also, A is constant. Non-zero. A is a constant. Yeah, either negative value or positive value, it's a constant. There is some value to it. So it can never be zero. That's the reason. Okay. Basic differences, clear so far? Yeah. Now let's get into our next topic. Structural equation modeling. This is what we're going to talk about.